Hey everyone, so uh, thanks for the invite. Today I'm going to talk a bit about like data discovery on Amazon and uh, and uh, Presto. So before that, so currently I, I just recently joined Databricks focusing on uh, the lake house and a bit on still on data discovery and data catalog. Previously, I was an engineer at the Leaf Data Dis uh, Platform and Tools team led various project. I'm also a Apache Airflow PMC members. So today's agenda, I'm going to talk, uh, give a brief of intros about Amazon, then go into the architectures. Lastly, I will talk a bit about like the project's impact and future work and uh, Q and A. Sounds good. So, so first, let me talk about Amazon. So before Amazon exists, how's the data discovery looks like at Lyft? Here is how it looks like. So before that, we we have like in 2018, we we start to in, uh, enter the hyper growth in at Lyft. We start to ha have more data scientists, data engineers to do like various discovery. Uh, we only have a static wiki, conference wiki page to host like about like 20 wiki page, of, uh, 20 tables are listed. And, and then the metadata refresh is through a uh, cron jobs, no, and cannot be added by humans uh, curations. The metadata is also pretty limited, like including like uh, owners, like codes and descriptions, and it's not very easy to extend. And, So you could see like the data discovery experience is not very productive. Like we have a, previously our product manager had done a study to uh, a research study to see like how much time spent by a data scientist. They found that about 30% of their time actually is spending in data discovery. So and only very limited time on like the data analysis. So as you could see like data discovery itself doesn't provide much value because like you want like the scientists to sp spend most of their time doing impactful work, like doing like the actual analysis for to make like decision making. So how could we reduce the data discovery time? The answer is like using a data catalog, a metadata tool like Amazon. So it, what is Amazon? In a nutshell, it's a data discovery metadata platform to improve the data uh, productivity for data scientists data engineers who interact with data. It's currently hosted at uh, Linux Foundation AI and, and, and data as a, as a incubation projects. And it's well-defined uh, open governance and RFC process. For detail, you could take a look at the link in the blog post. So, so how does this look like for Amazon? Here is like the homepage. So you could see like you have, it come with a search bar, allow you to search any uh, res uh, resource entity that have been indexed into Amazon. You could see like uh, book uh, tags, like basically you want to classify some of the resource group by certain tags, bookmarks, some of the resource like table dashboards uh, that, has, that you are follow and bookmark. Lastly, is that like you come with a popular tables. It's like, Based on the uh, usage, you want to surface mo the most uh, data set that have been used across the whole company. Yeah, you could uh, come with a uh, like, uh, search bar that you could do any arbitrary fuzzy search to, to search any uh, terms. Like you could search like schema name, table names, description columns, uh, dashboard name, etc. Once you found one, you could see the detail of the data set. So here is a uh, one, uh, here is a, a table page that we check like the usage log for, for Amazon so back at back at Lyft. You have like, you know, like you it is a hype table. It is a, you know, like what's the description about it's like checking user action to, for us to better understand how uh, internal user using Amazon. And you have like, you could see like the day range, basically the low watermark, the high watermarks, certain tags, last updated timestamp, when it has been last updated, some of the frequent user owner on, owners of the tables, 
on the right hand side, you could see like columns, like what are the uh, column names, types, descriptions, and uh, what the dashboard has been using these tables. On the on the net uh, bar is like you will see like what's a GitHub source file for this page, and as data preview as well data explorations. If you click some of the columns and if you uh, include the uh, column statistic, you will also surface the uh, column discussion in markdown format as well as the column statistic as well. Yeah, so this mentioned before, like the description use uh, will surface, like you could see like which dashboard has been using these uh, tables. Yeah, you could also search dashboard, uh, search dashboard as well. Dashboard uh, is very useful for, uh, and is for their uh, user to see and report their analysis. Once you click that, you could see the dashboard page here. Let's say you can include some of the metadata like what's the owner's, uh, when has been last created, when is last updated, when is last run. So this helps us to understand like, uh, but basically whether this dashboard is kind of stale, it's like whether it has few uh, uh, refresh and runs recently or it's already like stopped working. And you also get some of the uh, nice metadata like real count, like how many user has been viewed and using this dashboard. On the, uh, on the right hand side, you know like the, which table has been used by this dashboard, what are queries or what are the charts uh, for this given dashboard. You could even see the uh, co-workers, like you could search, like if you in, enable the user uh, resource index, you could also search like some of the employees to see what are the, tab uh, what are the tables uh, they have been used, they have been owned, and they have been frequently, uh, uh, they have been bookmarked. And you also come with, uh, in the homepage, you also come with a plugin client to support announcements. So oftentimes you want to, use Amazon as a central data portal and to report any of the new feature, for, you could use it to report like, for example, uh, any new feature for Amazon, as well as, for example, some of the new data set has been recently built and you want to announce the user to use it. And it also come with the integration with the uh, uh, Jira and some of the uh, issue report clients. And, at LIF, we use Amazon as a central data quality issue portal, meaning like um, user, what, once they re, uh, found like data quality issue, they could, uh, they could report through uh, Amazon table page as well. And you will automatically create a ticket. And, and then user could uh, see some of the past uh, issues that have been reported by this uh, uh, table as well as the current uh, data quality issue that is report uh, currently has been still investigating. And you support a data profile, a data preview uh, plugin client as well. So at LIF, we, uh, our BI tool is Apache, uh, we leverage like Superset and Mo Analytics. So we build a plugin client with uh, Superset to, to surface the data, data preview. So that you don't need, you don't need to like say every user, every time you will want to see the data share, you run like select star from a given table uh, many times. Uh, if you want to do like a complex data explorations after seeing the data shape, a uh, data profile, you could even like uh, uh, click the explore button and then redirect to uh, some BI tool, for example, here is like the SQL lab for superset. So we, you could, uh, and we pay some uh, SQL template for you to, to do data exploration. You could modify and then uh, do like com uh, other data set joining, etc. Given this is a Presto meetup, let's also talk a bit about like Presto at, at Lyft and how Amazon has been utilized and integrated with Presto. So, uh, so Presto uh, at Lyft, so Presto primary has been used for ad hoc uh, query use case. And recently it started to evolve and have a lot more like ETL uh, use case as well. So traditionally uh, the ETL is primarily on Hive and a little bit on Spark, but uh, 
Then recently, like the team, uh, the Presto team at Lyft has been building and working on enable like ETL use case for for uh, Presto as well. So you could see like on the left hand side, there are I'm not sure you could see my mouse, but there there are two primary use case. Uh, like ad hoc and so our ETL. Like our ETL orchestration and live is uh, Afro. They all issue like certain query against like the Presto gateway. And then the gateway will uh, based on the query header to uh, delegate the query request to ET, ET, either an ad hoc cluster as well as a, or a ETL cluster based on the use case. I believe, I, I believe for ad hoc uh, cluster, the query timeout will be uh, about like 10 minutes while the ETL use case, ETL cluster will have a longer query timeout. And all these queries will be locked through a central query lock, which will show surface like say, uh, which ETL jobs has been triggered this press query or who, which user has been running this press query. And all this press uh, query log will be consumed by Amundsen. Amundsen use uh, the Presto query log primarily for a few reasons. First, when we build the search index, we want to surface the most relevant uh, tables based on usage. So we will, based on the query log usage, we will do a ranking on the, on the search index and weight those data set that has a higher uh, uh, usage. We also like surface like which ETL job, like uh, create which tables with some of the customization on Apple side and which will get locked in the query lock. And we also want to surface, for example, if you see the previously the page, we want to surface that which user has been reading uh, rich tables. So we want to surface this information as well. Now let me get into a bit on the architectures. Uh, Amazon is come with like three services, like front end metadata and search. I would, and then the uh, ingestion will, uh, the default ingestion is come with a data builder ingestion library. The front end is written like a uh, uh, pretty modern data front end stack, like written in TypeScript with React JS using Redux for state management. Uh, the metadata service is uh, could connect with different uh, data store. Currently, it, uh, it comes with Neo4j, which is cy uh, cyber, uh, cyber query base, AWS Neptune, which are Gremlin based. You also support Apache Atlas, which is a pretty uh, popular metadata, the metadata store engines as a back, another backend as well. You support like REST API for, at least we support REST API for other services to pushing and pulling metadata directly. And the authorization is through like Envoy RBAC. The search services is uh, come, also come with uh, support using like Elasticsearch in the back, back end to support a few different search patterns like fuzzy search as well as multi faceted search. Fuzzy search is like in the homepage, if you don't know what you are trying to search, you only know certain terms like ETA dispatch, you will, you can't, uh, you could use that to search. Multi faceted search is like, if you know you want to search certain schema table under certain schema, you could limit the result set under certain conditions. So the data builder is a, a default injection library if you're using Neo4j or uh, Neo4j has a backend store. And it's very inspired by a project called Apache Goblin. It comes with four stages like extractor, transformer, loader, and publisher. Extractor is like you connect the, because there are so many different heterogeneous source. We define a uh, generic interface, but allow you to extend for different heterogeneous. You could build your own Snowflake extractor, BigQuery extractor, even like a uh, superset extractor or uh, or Redux extractor, for example, which will extract record and fit into a given model. The, the transformer stage is like, if you want to enrich this model data, then you could put some of the customization transformer on uh, and that will change the model. Then lastly, pass it to loader. Loader is try to load the record into a staging area, which will be later easy to do a batch publish and uh, push the data into the downstream store like Neo4j or Neptune. And how is data builder orchestrated? So at Lyft, we use like, uh, 
we use Airflow, which is a pretty popular orchestration framework to orchestrate. So this graph is drawn like in 2018. Uh, but now I think it's already become pretty huge. It's like we have many different uh, data source and and one of the nice thing for Airflow is that allow you to specify different dependency. So you want certain metadata to, to trigger first before trigger the downstream uh, metadata. Like you we want, and in this case, we want like, we want to index and make sure the table metadata job has been finished first. And uh, thanks to a community, we now have many different building connectors to connect when it uh, different heterogeneous source. So a bit of deep dive for the, uh, the Amazon. So the metadata model. So it currently it, it comes with three types of uh, resource indexing. So data sets, people, and dashboard. We model the data set uh, as a graph. So the central of the data set will be a table node, and it has a different uh, different extent metadata. It connect with like, for example, you connect with the columns, like with the column has column uh, relationship, connect with the description node with that has description. This allow us to easily extend if we want to add uh, uh, other metadata. We just like adding a uh, mod model like the uh, in a graph allow us to easily extend later on if we want to add uh, more additional metadata we just need to place the additional metadata as a node in the graph and build our edges uh, uh, edges and connect to the existing nodes uh, it, we consider met, uh, metadata both uh, uh, the metadata are, in, are very important it comes with two uh, uh, Play, uh, to approach the curated. One is manual curated, one, one is programmatic curated. Programmatic curated is typically, it's like you want to ingest the uh, metadata from the source of truth, like high meta store. Manual curated is com sometimes come with like, for example, like user create a tags for a given uh, data set or updated descriptions, etc. We found uh, some of the challenge we face at live is like not every data set defined the same set of metadata. So you, it's not easy to standardize this metadata across all the data sets. For example, some, some data set come define SLA or tier like for your T0, T1, but others don't. And user, user we think like user has the uh, most context and tribal knowledge around data sets. So we index user as well. Uh, Dashboard. Dashboard is represent a user study or user analysis. So it's, as you can see, after we index dashboard, the graph could be extended to connect between table and dashboard as well. And here are some of the met metadata uh, we in integrate currently, like uh, owner descriptions, uh, some of timestamp for a given dashboards. And it push versus pull. So, this define like how we ingest the metadata. The pool model is like periodic update the, the uh, metadata by pooling the system. So this is this kind of model is uh, okay if you, for example, you will want to, uh, if you don't need like very uh, near real time, like for one minute minutes uh, levels uh, as uh, refresh uh, met, uh, SLA metadata, and it's also easy to bootstrap. For push push model is like if if you define for example SDK or connect with a hook, the metadata will once refresh you will push to a message queue, and you have a, a for example Kafka consumer to connect this message queue and persist the information into a graph. That's preferred if you have a large volume of uh, a large volume or you will require near real time indexing. This, this also requires if you have a clear uh, interface, it sits across the, the board. So currently, Neo, if you come with uh, using Neo4j or Neptune as backend store, we default use a pool model, but it's easy to extend to a push and pull model because uh, at Lyft, uh, we have an internal uh, version, which is an external service will push some of the uh, metadata to Kafka and you could leverage the data build to consume, uh, consume the Kafka topic and then persist to Neo4j. 
if you're using Atlas as a backend, that is using the default using a push model. The downside of Atlas is that it doesn't support like external uh, source like Redshift if the, the that external source doesn't support hook interface. Uh, Tom, just a quick time check. Uh, if you could wrap up in a minute or two, that'll be good. We can answer some questions in that. Uh, okay. Yes, okay. I guess I could skip this one. So uh, let me talk a bit about the impact and the future books. So I live with like we we uh, index many. Uh, we have a high WAU and index of what more than one fifty k of tables. And our community in Slack is at more than 1,000 and, and more than 25 company has official claim using productions. For future, we are currently at, uh, building like uh, native lineage supports. Here is uh, some of them UX mock. You can see like we come with table lineage as the MVP. Others is like, for example, servicing ML features as a, a resource entity as well. For detail, you could see like the roadmap as well, RFC. So any questions? Yes, there are a couple of questions. So um, yeah, I think we have time for a couple before our next talk. Um, the uh, first question is, uh, Presto can connect to a range of different catalogs as well and data sources. Uh, and so Presto can connect to MySQL, um, you know, Postgres, data lakes. Um, Amatsin obviously does the same as well and connects to Presto. When, how does it, uh, uh, what is the recommended approach? Do you connect directly to Amatsin uh, or do you connect to uh, Presto and use the catalogs that are attached? Uh, I mean, depends on your use case. Are you talking about you running a, a query uh, uh, exploring? Uh, then you will use like, for example, uh, Presto and then connect to different other catalog like MySQL. But you will want to index the metadata. Then you could leverage like the default, like uh, if you want to use Amazon for data, uh, metadata in indexing, then you could use like the default data builder uh, injection library that offered by Amazon. So we come with like, for example, even like Presto connector, uh, Presto extractor, MySQL extractor as well, that could automatically uh, ingest those metadata. Got it, thank you. Um, another question is um, around the ETL jobs. Uh, so the question is for the ETL jobs that are being run, uh, how complex are these jobs? And do you have any metrics that can help uh, understand how much, how much time uh, it takes to process this uh, and how it's related with uh, uh, with uh, uh, Amazon. Uh, yeah, so so uh, so each metadata job is just a Python callable, so you could make it a multi process or single process, and then it depends. The time to run is really depends on how much data you have in the back. If you, will, for example, have like one thousand table, that of of course you will be pretty. Um, uh, pretty quick, but if you have a very large volume and metadata and you do it sequentially, that will be take like uh, maybe hours, for example, one or two hours. So it really depends. And you could, uh, for, that's also one of the nice thing for Airflow or other orchestration, you could parallelize some of metadata in parallel, leveraging the workflow orchestration. So at live with like, we don't really have a high, uh, we really don't, we mostly have a 12 hour SLA for metadata refresh. So we oftentimes just run the metadata job twice a day. Uh, 